Healthcare Onomics Changing Healthcare by Changing the Way You Think About Healthcare. Howdy, folks. Welcome to Healthcare Onomics. I'm your host, Dr. Kevin Way Casey, and today we're going to be continuing our series on Obamacare Exposed with my special guest, Rich Weinstein. Rich is a financial uh, investment advisor and a health insurance agent from the greater Philadelphia area who has uh, broken a lot of videos and information on the internet and in the news media in recent years about one of the Obamacare architects, Jonathan Gruber, whom we all know and love so well, or we should, because he thinks America. Americans are stupid for letting Obamacare get passed by Congress. So in any case, Rich is here today and we're going to discuss a video that Rich actually put out about Senator Max Baucus talking about Obamacare. And Rich, tell us a little bit about uh, what was going on with this video. Well, first, I just looked at the video and I had forgotten that I actually put that video out there <laughs> about four years ago. So uh, I was re I was looking at it and I was thinking, I wonder who wonder who put that out there and yeah. so again it was me. So yeah. so what what I have and what we're going to look at is this video from Max Baucus. Now Max Baucus basically ran the show to get Obamacare the Affordable Care Act passed. Yeah, it, it went through his committee. He held all the hearings. He right. was the guy in charge. Right. And what we have Max Baucus talking about, and this is a great example of how they sold one thing with one hand, but were doing some, they were doing something else with the other hand. So what we want to look at is we're going to hear what Max Baucus says regarding something called the excise tax. Okay. And now, now people don't know what the excise tax is. And, and when we're done, I'll reveal what the excise tax really is. But we're going to listen to Max Baucus and listen to what he says. Okay, so let's check it out now as Max Baucus is testifying in Congress. Uh, this is obviously right before the passage of Obamacare, so let's, let's uh, take it away. Also heard arguments that the excise tax on, pri on private insurance companies offering costly and excessive insurance plans will raise taxes on individuals. This claim is equally untrue. The, the Congressional Budget Office so reaches the conclusion that that's not true. In fact, the Congressional Budget Office reaches the conclusion that it will lower premiums. I think the amount is 7 to 12 percent, if I remember correctly, the amount stated in the letter to us in the Congress. Now, wait a cotton picking minute here. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about what he's saying there. Uh, Senator Baucus describes at first, he talks about lowering or, excuse me, raising taxes that the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, the law, once it's passed, it's not going to raise taxes, but in fact, it'll lower your premiums. Now, I don't know, was this guy on something when he was talking about this? Or can you explain this, what was going on through his mind? Because uh, I don't get it. He's talking about taxes on the one hand and premiums on the other. So tell us what that means. <laughs> well, the way they, they wanted to present this to the public was it was all, all cherries and peaches. It was nothing but great stuff. So one of the problems with this excise tax yeah. was they were putting a tax on high-value company-sponsored plans. So we're talking about the stuff you get from work. So we're talking about this impacts over 180 million people. Now, are or, these the so-called Cadillac plans? or the, that That's the term they gave it. They called okay. it a Cadillac tax to make it sound like it only applied to the super high CEO, gold-plated, right. maybe the unions, nobody else. Okay. So so that's what they were trying to describe. So so basically they were saying, oh, don't, don't worry about this little person. It, it doesn't impact you, but it does. So, so what he's talking about first is they they want to put a tax on these high value Cadillac plants. Yeah, and they decided they couldn't put it. What they decided to do is they were going to put the tax on the on the insurance company on the plan. And what he's saying is we're not putting this tax on the individual. We're putting it on the plan, and it won't pass through in the form of premiums. On the health insurance company, you're saying he, he's saying that we're going to tax the health insurance companies. Correct. Okay. And gotcha. so they're going to tax the insurance companies. Okay. And and no, no, no. The insurance companies won't add this tax to the premiums of the plans <laughs> because and, and pass it through to the consumer, which is which is which is moronic. Which it's it's really apropos. We're talking about this because right now we're talking about tariffs. Right. We're talking about tariffs. Yeah, and, with China. And with China. So the problem, the argument against Trump in tariffs is 
those tariffs get added price. onto the cost of the products and get passed down to the consumer. Well done. That's act that's actually correct. So but Ma Max Block is saying, no, 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 no. That's no, not no. gonna happen. The taxes. No. So we're gonna we're gonna charge, we're gonna as the government, we're gonna charge the health insurance companies more. But don't worry, they're not gonna pass it on to you, the actual consumers. I mean, correct. But 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 that but that, it, it, that's not even the dumb part. Yeah. The, the, then he says, well, you know, uh, the the employers are going to then alter your plan design so that to get you out of this this Cadillac tax thing. So what they're going to do is they're going to take you from a gold level plan with high premiums, and yeah. they're going to they're going to drop you down high premiums, low out of pocket. And they're going to drop you down to a silver-plated plan. Right. Or bronze. With, right. Or, right. Well, yeah, with lower premiums and higher out-of-pocket. So he talks so, about that here in this next segment of the video. Let's take a look at it and see what he says. This policy, therefore, is not a tax on individuals. Rather, it's a tax on private insurance companies and not pass on to the nature of higher premiums, according to the CBO. In fact, lower premiums, according to the CBO. What the f did he just say that? Did he really just say what you just said that the that the premiums are not gonna not gonna increase the taxes? That's crazy. I mean, it's well, absolutely nuts. He actually said premiums are gonna drop. Yeah. Now that now that sounds great. <laughs> that sounds great. But what he forgot to say is what I no noted before. You're going from a gold plated plan yeah. to a silver or a silver to a bronze. So yeah, technically your premiums are dropping. That's the because the being. quality of your plan is dropping. Right, right. That's why. So, again, what was that thing they said before? If hmm. you like your plan, you can <laughs> keep your plan. Wait, here it is. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. Yeah, there you go. The, he said it. That's right. Uh, not, so we've not got so, two liars so in much. the same episode. Not so much. Yeah. So it, which, what's really great, not great, great, but great bad is – they sold like they they said if you like your plan keep your plan and then we found out that people like me who get I got my used to get my plan from the non group market well I I oh well it's just a few a few people that are having that problem right but what they didn't nobody ever got into the details to say this excise tax goes after the 180 million people that get their plans from their employer. Anybody that, who gets their plan from their employer is fair game then is what you're saying. Yeah, and that is you that's all right everybody so, else let's let's hear what uh, senator Baucus continues on in this video I'm, I'm anxious to hear this legislation is designed to encourage private insurance companies to offer and employers to choose health insurance plans with lower premiums that are below the taxable threshold and the congressional budget office noted just how effective this policy is in this report when it said most people would avoid the cost of the excise tax by enrolling in plans that had lower premiums what the f you got to be kidding me. On the one hand, we've got Obama at the same time, at the same, you know, probably the same room saying that if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. And yet here is Senator Baucus, one of the, as you say, one of the behind the scenes architects, the ringleader, if you will, of Obamacare saying that our plan is to force employers and force consumers into these lower premium uh, more risk, you know, lesser quality, depending on how you judge quality, which you know how I stand on that. But they want to force people out of these low deductible gold and silver plated plans, or not silver plated, but the gold plated plans. They want to force them out of those and into these cheaper plans uh, to avoid the excise tax. So, gosh, uh, this this is just insanity. Well, so, well, well, hold on for a second. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you what real insanity is. They rate they rate it. <laughs> They, they, they rigged, rigged it. They rigged it. So so just I'm going to work with my hands here. So let me show you how they sure. rigged it. So they set a trigger point for that excise tax. Yeah. So if you're pre – and now don't quote me on these numbers. I'm just trying to – so it's understand – so we can all understand. Right. If, you, if you're a single person, they set the trigger point for this excise tax at around $10,000. So if you, the, cost, the, the cost of your plan was over $10,000 yeah. as an individual, they put the tax on everything above it. OK, oh. so you may you may have thought, well, I'm a silver plate of plant. I'm here below the trigger point. Right. Well, that trigger point, it grows. It grows with inflation. So it might be ten thousand dollars in the next year. It might be ten thousand five hundred. Right. 
But your premium, your $9,000 premium, it grows historically at inflation plus four or five percent. Yeah, inflation plus, as, as all things related to health care and health insurance do. Correct. So the trigger point goes up and your premium goes up and the trigger point goes up and now your silver plan. I get it. Is a problem. So what it. do you do? Oh, you got to drop it down to a gold, uh, to, to a uh, bronze or copper or, or aluminum plan. And before you know <laughs> it, before you know it, every plan becomes a Cadillac tax plan. Wow. And and they did that's it was designed intentionally basically to wipe out the non the, to wipe out the group market. It was intended for that. It was intended for the employer to frankly give up and say, I'm done with company sponsored insurance. Here's some money. Mm-hmm. And we'll, I'm going to talk about that, too. And go to the exchanges. Now, OK, and, so that's quite interesting that you say that, because and let me just point out that in my book, I theorize in my first book, The Guide to Buying Health Insurance and Healthcare. I theorized that Obamacare came around when it did, because remember, Obamacare had a mandate that virtually everybody in the country has to buy health insurance uh, through the employer or the individual mandate, uh, the requirement. And it's my theory, and it sounds like I'm probably wrong in this, um, that when employers started to say in the you know 2000s as deductibles were going up and premiums are still going up and they, nobody was catching a break on their health insurance, um, it's my contention that the employers were saying, enough, we're going to stop this. And so it makes sense to me, looking at it from that perspective, that at that point, the health insurance companies would go to Congress, lobby Congress, because you know they wrote the Affordable Care Act. The insurers wrote Obamacare. I'm sure of that. I'd arm wrestle you over that one. Right? I'd bet money on it. Um, and I think they went to Congress and said, hey, look, we, we've got to keep in the game. We've got to keep ourselves in the game. Because if, if all the employers drop, I mean, as I also say in my book, if health insurance hadn't become allied or married to employment back in the 40s and 50s, then by the 70s, we wouldn't have needed it, really, because health care, the prices of health care would have kept uh, pace with inflation. So my question for you is, that's a very interesting take on it that you're telling me that the theory is that, that you think they structured this, they rigged it so that when the Cadillac plan level is initially at the gold level, but because of the the uh, incremental increase in the Cadillac level threshold versus the increase, drastically higher increase in the premiums based upon premium plus inflation, um, you're saying that the, the goal was for them to get employers out of the health insurance business? A- a- absolutely. And okay. I'm going to tell, wh- tell you why. We talked about it last time. Two words. Yeah. Tax grab. Tax okay. grab. Okay. Remember, the biggest tax break in the tax code is the company is the exclusion for company right. sponsored plans. Right. So when your employer offers you a plan right. and they pay premiums on your behalf, yeah, they're not. Taxed. That's not taxable income. That's so if you right. add up all that tax break, it's something like three hundred and fifty yeah, billion, billion dollars a year. And I, um, yeah, I think that's per year. It's I, a I, year. Track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, and so, please so uh, over over a over a ten year budget cycle, it's three and a half trillion dollars. Yeah, yeah. So if and lost can, revenue. If they can squeeze people out of these plans and onto the exchanges, or even just drop them into lower lower quality plans, right? Less money out of the from the employer to pay on your behalf. Right. It's don't don't laugh when I say this. It's it's assumed. That when the employer drops you, drops the quality of your plan, and they pay less for you, yeah, make that face. They will recompensate you dollar for dollar with wages. So let me just say that a different way. Yeah. As as they drop paying tax-free benefits for you, they will recompensate you dollar for dollar with taxable wages. So that's the theory that I guess the CBO or Congress or the Obamacare architects came up with, correct? Do you really want to know? Yeah. Do you really want to know? Yeah. There was a study done in the 1990s that, that they found, some, some economists found that when they mandated maternity coverage, yeah. for the employers had to mandate, then basically what the employers do is they held back wages. And it was almost on a dollar-for-dollar dollar basis. Oh. So they found that when you mandated a benefit, 
it essentially came out of wages. Right. So they decided that they were going to apply that same theory in reverse. If you relieve the employer of paying for a benefit, then they would recompensate dollar for dollar for wages. Do you have any idea what genius came up with that plan, that idea? Uh, Mitt Romney. <laughs> Jonathan Gruber. It was Jonathan Gruber. It was Jonathan Gruber. And, and, Love and, uh, Gruber. Uh, Gruber was, the Goober. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So how did this, how did the CBO come up with this theory? I mean, with, you know, Gruber's applying his yeah. own theory, but in reverse, which has never been tested. Yeah. So, so in 2006, Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid took over Congress. Right. They get to pick the CBO director. They pick Peter Orzag. This is two oh, years before Obamacare yeah. comes into play. Yeah. They pick Peter Orzag. Peter Orzag, the first thing he does is he puts together a bunch of health policy wonks, 14 wonks, as an advisory board. 11 of them were far lefties, and three of them were not far lefties. None of which, none of whom would know which end of a thermometer to use without, uh, never mind, never mind. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. But you'll healthcare. never guess who one of the policy wonks was on the, on the healthcare advisory board guiding the CBO on things like this. Dr. Gruber. Jonathan Gruber. Yeah, okay. Jonathan Strikes Gruber. again, so, yeah. He inserted his own theory into the CBO score. No. And next thing you know, we have this dollar for dollar thing where the employer is going to recompensate employees on a dollar for dollar basis. And, now, and if, I have to say, know, I have to say, OK, let me say this that on the surface. That makes sense. OK, because aside from what everybody, you know, not everybody, but aside from what a lot of people say about these greedy capitalist pigs that want to run employees into the ground and run Charles Dickens sweatshops, you know, and Oliver Twist type days. No, I think that most employers treat their employees very well. And if they can pay them more, they would pay them more because they want to attract, motivate, and retain talent. You know, that's the bottom line with these employers. So, but, 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 you know, but on the surface, it makes sense. But tell me your but thoughts. There's a, but there's a difference. When yeah. you're compensating somebody with wages, first of all, the employer's got to pay in the FICA. you oh, got to yeah. pay payroll taxes. Yep. Secondly, if they're sending an employee over to the exchange, and that employee is going to be subsidized on the exchange, then the employer is not going to give is not going to give them such a, a wage raise that right. they're going to come out ahead. He'll make right. sure they break out even. They break 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 even. True. So so just in that regard, it's not going to work out. Yeah. But but if you if we if you go back and listen to what Baucus said on, on that video, he says in fact, eighty three percent of the tax revenue that comes in from the excise tax is not from going over the, 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 the trigger point. It's from employers recompensating employees with taxable wages. Wow. That's where the money comes from. And that's why Jonathan that's why Jonathan Gruber said that the first this is the only uh, the Affordable Care Act is the only policy where in the second 10 years it becomes more budget friendly than the first 10 years. Why? Wow. Because it's wiping more and more people off their off their company sponsored plans. Yeah, into the it, individual it market. Come, and when he when he, just to go back to the stupid videos, the three stupid videos. Yeah, there's only three. Talking, okay, it seems like more. But what's he talking about? What's I know he's calling the American people stupid, but over what policy? It's the Cadillac tax. That's. What he's talk he's talking about. So that's this. specifically what he's talking about is the fact that let me see if I got this right. The fact that the Cadillac tax was passed with the idea. Let me let me uh, break this down for people. Unpack this as they say. So the Cadillac tax was passed off as a a tax that was only going to affect a certain amount of people. But the reality is, it applies to everybody. Uh, above a certain threshold. And company, if you're choosing company wide, yep. so it's not the executives, it's not the CEOs, it's the, you know, health insurance is a great equalizer when it comes to companies because the guy making $6 million or the gal making $6 million at the top most likely has the same health insurance plan as a person, you know, sweeping the floors. So health insurance is a great equalizer. Um, so the Cadillac tax did not apply to just the top upper crust echelons. Instead, it applied to an amount. And that amount I could see being easily exceeded because of the propensity of people who have employer-sponsored plans to what? To go for the gold, baby. Go for the gold. We gotta buy the most expensive health insurance plan. Hell, my employer's paying for it. I'm not gonna it's, pay for it. It's, it's tax free. So and Gruber, yeah, exactly, and it's tax free. So Gruber passed this. He's 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 keep in mind what makes Jonathan Gruber worthy of. Uh, 
absolute contempt, contempt. contempt in my <laughs> mind, if not worse, is the fact that he not only constructed this and is very arrogant and proud about the American people being stupid, he helped to pass this. He helped to get this sold to the American people through marketing, which I think is marketing is nothing more than the creative art of lying anyway. But bottom line, what Gruber did, let me again unpack this. The Cadillac tax is not a Cadillac tax at all. It applies across the board to everyone. With the idea being that ultimately the Cadillac tax isn't going to be collected by too many folks. Not too many folks will pay into the Cadillac tax because they'll do whatever they can to avoid it. The idea right. being to shift people off this employer-sponsored health insurance where the employers, keep in mind, folks, the employers, when they pay your health insurance premiums, they are not taxed on that money. Versus if you go out and buy your own health insurance plan, aha, uh -huh, like me, you get taxed on that money. Those are after-tax dollars. That's a huge disparity. And what Rich said earlier about this disparity is it, it, it equals something. It's in the hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Somebody, somebody out there, uh, please correct us in the comments I, I think below. It's, I think it's 350. Yeah, I think it's over 300. I think it's 320, 350, something like that, too. Uh, but it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars a year that the federal government is losing out on in tax revenue because of this employer exemption. That was, and when was that passed? That was that's from the forties, correct? It's, it it was it was back to the war. Yeah, yeah, it was back after World War II. This is how they sold health insurance through employer sponsored stuff. So Obamacare, as we're proving, as we're unpacking now with this vi wonderful video of, of Senator Baucus. Uh, Obamacare has been sold not only as a song and a dance, but as an absolute lie to people. And Jonathan Gruber, who, again, what did he say? You know, called the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. You got that right. He called American voters stupid. And the reason they're stupid is because people like him got one over on all of us. So it's time to repeal Obamacare and get rid of this. Keep in mind also that Max Baucus, where is he today? He Did he not run for election, re-election, or did he get beat, or what happened to him? I, th I think he's in, he's in industry now. But did he's, he get, did he run for re-election? I, I don't I, think so. I, I think I think he basically threw this, this, uh, this crap sandwich on us and went away. <laughs> well, I think I know why he retired and went into industry, is because Max Baucus was one of the high, highest paid congressmen uh, of all time, from 2003 to 2008, by the health insurance and health care lobbies, who collectively paid Senator Baucus during that five-year time period, almost, it was right at $4 million, folks. Now, that's good work if you can get it. Let me tell you, I've never made that kind of money as a physician. So, yeah, Senator Baucus did his due diligence for his uh, paymasters, I would submit. So, again, tell us, Rich, about this, uh, what Obamacare is doing, and, and, and we need to really talk about, on a future episode, I really want to dive into this idea of the recompensation, as you mentioned it. That is, that if an employer is paying for its employees' health insurance premiums, and they decide to pay less in health insurance premiums, or if they decide not to pay the health insurance premiums anymore, which is unlikely because the employer mandate's not going away, um, but if the employer decides to cut back on the health insurance premiums, it would make sense that, you know, if the same money is coming into the company year after year, they should turn more of that back over to the employees. But I'm wondering, here's, here's the, the, what, I'm, what I'm questioning now is the corollary of this, is how has the rising health insurance premiums negatively affected raises? I know it has, but I would love to get into the numbers on that and see if there's any hard data uh, to show or to support that idea, that contention that I, I, I've read articles, uh, you know, anecdotal articles about Texas teachers, especially who um, their raises every year are being eliminated by the increases in their health insurance premiums. But these are premiums that they themselves pay. The, their school districts are not paying a lot more of those premiums. They're having to force, be forced to pay a lot more of those premiums themselves. So uh, again, tell us a little bit, though. I'm sorry, I, I kind of rambled on there. But tell <laughs> us, tell us uh, what else you got in store for us uh, on the next episode of, of uh, Obamacare Exposed. Well, just sticking on the excise tax for a yeah, second. Yeah. So we know they sold it as lower premiums. We know they sold it as wage growth. We know they sold it as the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> they didn't tell you that you'd have to lose your plan for this to happen. But one right. thing they sold it as, right. and this is what this is what they really had to do because because for for many reasons, they sold it as cost control. Yeah, cost yeah. control. So so <sighs> that's when we get on cost control, 
Mm-hmm. We're going to see the theory of the excise tax and cost control. And that's going to be on the left hand and on the on the right hand, probably on the further left hand, the further left hand, yeah, further, the further uh, communist left hand. left hand, the further left hand. We'll talk about how how this applies to Medicare for all, which, uh, which yes. you see where I'm going? Yes. Because the, the, the two theories that they had here and here, they're conflicting and there's no way they can both exist at the same time. They can't. Well, so let me ask you this as a kind of a, uh, just a general question here. What do you think the, I, I believe, I'll give you my points and I'll see what you think. Um, I think that the, the Congress that passed Obamacare had, had a short-term goal, which was obviously being paid lobbyists money and power and influence reelection stuff. Um, that was a short term. The middle term, that goal was switched over and flip flop to the health insurance companies because they, hey, they got a law passed that says everybody's got to buy their product. I mean, what what better thing to have in the country than a law saying you got to buy my widgets? I'm going to go up on the price of my widgets too. So those are the short and the middle or the short and the medium goals. The long term goal, I believe, for the Democrats, for the uh, liberals which I hate calling them liberals. They're more like progressives or socialists or just communists, mm-hmm. scum. Mm-hmm. But um, the, the, I think their goal long-term was to pass Medicare for all. Now, again, this is my uneducated uh, theory on this and opinion. I, I want your take on this. I really think that they viewed that, that just like you said with the Cadillac tax, employers are going to get tired of all this and throw their hands up at, uh, you know, eventually and say, you know what, I'm done, we're done with this, we're going to... It's my theory that the health insurance, uh, health care interaction, that system that the Democrats helped muddy with Obamacare, I think it was their intention all along, long term, to have it just get so messed up, so screwed up, that Americans in general just started saying, okay, that's it, man, we just need Medicare for all. Let's just do Medicare for all because we're so tired of dealing with this. Your thoughts, Rich? <sighs> I think the idea was to get everybody into the game. And 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 the one word I I have a problem with, and it's become a commonly accepted word that both everybody uses, the word's universal. And that that's <laughs> I, right. I, I, re, I realized yeah. I realized that once universal became a, a accepted terminology for what's going on, I realized and I'm going to, this may be the wrong way to say it. I realized we had a problem yeah. because universal implies collectivism. Yeah. And yeah. so everything we're talking about here is collectivism. That's right. But non-voluntary collectivism, which is a very bad thing. But we are a nation of individual rights and freedoms. That's right. So when you have individual rights and freedoms and collectivism, doing this they don't play well together no I, I would say almost every everything that's going on now the fights we're having universally i use the word <laughs> are the conflict between Pun collectivism 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 and, individual. and individual rights and freedoms yeah. that's where i think you know putting away the russian stuff and all that stuff every all the policy differences are that yeah and and, yeah. and somehow totally. somehow we got to collectivism was being universally accepted. So getting back to the healthcare point, once you got everybody covered, and I've and, and this was supposed to be a two-step process, I know that. First, they were going to uh, try to get everybody covered. Everybody has a benefit, everybody has skin in the game. And then after that, they were really gonna try to, to nail this thing down. Whether it was single payer or some other form of cost control or whatever it was gonna be, uh, it was supposed to be a two-step process, but step one was to get everybody covered because you yeah. look how difficult it was to un- to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, it's impossible. All of a sudden, wait, wait, you can't take their plan away. That's right. Now, now it's covered that way. No, you can't That's take right. the plan away from these people. So once you get everybody hooked on the crack, yeah. Now yeah, you have control of everything from that that point forward. So well, was the goal single payer? I, 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 you know what? It's interesting. Not, not, not just not to keep going, but uh, uh, a guy by the name of Mark Pauly, yeah. who was really the Gruber before Gruber. Uh, Mark Pauly 
uh, was the father of the Mandy individual Mandy, which most people don't know. It wasn't Gruber. It was it wasn't Heritage. It was Mark Pauly. Okay. And you can just just Google Mark Pauly, Ezra Klein, uh, Washington Post, and there's a whole write up on it. Ezra Klein, uh, they have a whole write up. And and Mark Pauly said there's only two ways to get the universal coverage. One is through a mandate, you know, and the Obviously. other, and the other, is single payer. So well, we will you, we'll well, cover you can see, this. You can, where, you can see where that. Where yeah, going. yeah, and I think we're going to cover this in the next episode of Obamacare Exposed because we get we just don't have enough time, folks. I mean, I love doing this, and I would talk forever. I'd do three hours of this if I could, but and we can, but I prefer to keep it shorter to thirty minute segments. You can catch us, uh, by the way, on uh, uh, iTunes and SoundCloud, Healthcare Onomics, and we're also on Mike Church's CrusadeChannel.com if you're interested in checking out Mike Church's. Crusade Channel. It's a great show. Mike's a wonderful guy, and, and I really appreciate him having us on there, uh, the Healthcare Nomics podcast. So, again, Rich, until next time, thank you so much for this. It's very informative, and uh, we'll find something else to scream about and some more uh, stupid videos if we can next time. Okay, so, so until next time, everybody, and Rich, thank you so much. Stay safe. Now you can easily compare health insurance plans and pick the one that makes the most financial sense with the Dr. W's Equation app. Available for Android and iPhone. And for more information on how you can save on health insurance and health care, check out my books. Available now on Amazon, iTunes, and Nook. To help spread this message, please click the like button on this video. You can also subscribe to the Healthcare Onomics YouTube channel and visit healthcareonomics.com.